All right, Shalom. Shalom, first off, we're going to start off by saying all praises, honor, and glory is due unto Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Yahweh His true name in the Hebrew, right? When the world any calls God, his true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. Ba Hashem in the name, Yahweh Shai being the name of the only begotten Son. Those are the true names of the Heavenly Father and the Son in the Hebrew. It's Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, not Jesus Christ, not God, not Yeshua. Not, not, not uh, Jesus Christos, none of that, right? I also want to say double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the hopeful elect preaching swear the truth and sincerity on the brother Tazaba. Lord will with another week to prophesy the downfall of Babylon the Great, which is America, that's written in the scriptures and code, right? We coming to the end of the American rule, right? And the end of any rule came with great violence, man. There's only one kingdom that went down that didn't go out with utter violence. And that was ancient Babylon, right? When, uh, uh, when uh, the, the, when, uh, what is that? Xerxes, not Xerxes, but, um, what is his name? Darius came in and took over, right? But America is destined, according to the scriptures, to go out with great violence. That's written in the book of Revelation. <coughs> it says, thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down. And why are these things getting cooked up for this place? Because it's wicked. The people are wicked, the rulers are wicked. The minds of the people are wicked. The things that are promoted are all wickedness. So when the Lord flooded, right? When the Lord flooded uh, the world back in the time of Noah, weren't they doing wickedness then? When the people, when, when the Lord caused the floods to come, and Noah was in the ark, and all those people that weren't in the ark were on the outside, don't you think they were banging on the ark to get in? Right? Holding babies. Slowly you hear people drown. Well, that's the state that America's gonna be in. The Lord is gonna overthrow America, man, through these other nations. Just like he overthrew every other kingdom in the world through other nations. It's not gonna be anything different. Right? And life as you know it, right? This whole holiday spirit bullshit. New Year's coming in, niggas is ready to fucking party and bull BS. All that shit's about to be out the door, man. You're not gonna have a good year. 2024 ain't gonna be better, right? You said in 2021, hopefully it's better. 2022, hopefully it's better. 2023, we here now at the end of 2023. Y'all was hoping it was better and shit is just getting worse by the day. Can't afford to live, can't afford to eat, can't afford the things you actually like not getting paid enough, right? Kids are, kids are the fucking worst. People are stupider, stupider, even in a nation. So where you have all this access to technology, people are still dumbasses. We're in the age of information, the people are dumbasses. They use the they use the internet for nothing more than twerk videos, right? Pet videos, and celebrity gossip. What's going on, man? So in, a, in an era where that, those things are promoted, where folly is promoted, some, something gotta come to even this shit out, right? And what you're seeing now is a dissident, right? A dividing of the nation. And it's beautiful because recently you had, a, you had Colorado state that uh, it's unconstitutional in Colorado for you to be able to vote for Trump. Well, what happens when these other states do the same thing? And if Trump ends up getting into the presidency, right? Against the people's wishes, against these states, what are those states are gonna say, we're not gonna be governed by the president of the US, right? America's fully divided. For them to sit here and say, Trump can't get be a president, but Biden can, and for another place to say, Biden can be a president, but Trump can't, that's gonna set up an entire divide. Civil unrest could come off the back of that, and that's beautiful because that's prophecy, right? The Lord said, what? If a kingdom divi be divided, let let's get it, man. This is uh, Matthew, 20, uh, Matthew 12 and 25. And Yahweh Shai knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom, Divided against itself is brought to desolation. 
And America is a kingdom that's brought to desolation because it's divided against themselves. You can't sit here and tell, tell people they can't vote for who they want because at the end of the day, when that vote comes in, if any party says, oh, well, he didn't win because he didn't have the state's votes, those states are uh, basically succeeding from the entire organization, which is the United States. So we coming in at times where shit is about to get hectic, civil unrest is about to go up, sedition among men, right, which is prophesied. Let me finish this Matthew 12. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? And that's what we see, man. Esau, right, which that word Satan means goes into the word adversary, right? Esau, who is the main adversary in the earth, especially against the Israelites, he's being divided against himself. And we come into the days where his kingdom ain't gonna stand. This, this American empire, the way people live here, actually is about to be out the door to him. It's not gonna be nice. Right? This is uh second Ezra. Second Ezra's uh 15 and 14. It says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Right? For their sword and their destruction draw nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. That sounds like civil unrest. That sounds like civil war. When you have one people standing against another, right? That's world war, that's civil unrest. The neighbor that you share a cup of sugar with from time to time, toss a beer to, he's gonna be the same one at your throat when all hell's kicking loose. It ain't gonna be nice. America's not gonna have a good 2023 ending. It's not gonna have a, a good 2024 beginning. All these economists are talking about how America's looking at the worst economic crash to ever happen in the country, right? To ever happen in the history of the country in, 2000, uh, in 2024, right? Y'all worried about towards the night before Christmas. You need to worry about towards the night before darkness, man. All hell's about to be here. They're talking about mass layouts supposed to be going on in 24. They've already started that in 2023. So when people get laid off of work, what happens? Crime's gonna shoot up. You're an Israelite, man. I don't know where you come from, but you're an Israelite. All right, then. It says, for, for, the, for the sword and the destruction draw nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men. You look at that word sedition, it goes into a violent uprising. So that's what the Lord's getting ready to put in, in this land, man. It's a sedition. Civil unrest, when people can't agree on who they want to lead them, right? There's factions made, there's divides. Right? It says, for there should be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard the kings nor their princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. So when civil unrest kicks off, when people feel like they ain't heard, right? They're gonna choose to do whatever the, whatever the fuck they wanna do. All right, so watch what happens with this whole election shit and them picking states that can do it because apparently other states are talking about having the same rules that Colorado had. Colorado said what is un unconstitutional in Colorado to vote for Trump. Well, imagine if you have the other states make the same constitutions where it's unconstitutional to vote for Biden. Right, then you gotta divide throughout the nation saying we, we, you can't be our president here. And other nations, other, country, other, other states agree to have them to be their president. That's civil unrest. People are gonna fight against each other, man. You got these gun hole Edomites, these so-called white people who are Edomites according to the Bible. Because everybody has their own nationality according to the scriptures. And it's not black, it's not white, right? There, there are nations according to the scriptures, but these so-called white people, right? These gun hole Americans, constitutional Americans, man, they gonna be at each other's necks because this whole next election, man, they setting it up to where civil unrest is gonna be here, man. And they put these things in your movies, in your media. They start talking about it on the news for a reason because it's getting prepared. There's a term called the revelation of the method. 
right? And that's what we see, and it's the revelation of the method. Esau put forth the plan, and we getting ready to see it plan out, man. But these things are according to the Lord's rule. Because nothing happens in this world that the Lord, the Heavenly Father, through his son didn't ordain. Whether it be death, whether it not be life, deliverance, the Lord ordained all these things. Right? Nobody has power outside of the power of the Lord. <coughs> it says, um, keep going in this. It says, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Right? When you're talking about a time where people are running through your houses, you don't know what to do, you leave your family. Hey, those days are coming to America. Right? And imagine, now we're in wintertime. You got all these people that immigrated to the U.S. from South America, all over the world, because when they go to those immigration sites, it's not just fucking so-called Latinos that are over there. They got plenty of people from Asia, plenty of people from, from Iran, plenty, plenty of people from uh, Turkey. All type of people go through those just to get in the States. But you got all these nations coming up, and here it is, we're coming in the winter, man. Them cold months, and they ain't used to that shit. They're getting abused, talk shit on, people yell at them in crowds. Well, guess what? Those same people gonna be out, everybody's next. Right, we, hey, 2023 was a shitty year, and 2024 is going to be so much fucking worse. And that's according to the scriptures. It said, behold, the end is come, the end is come, and watch it for thee, behold, the end is come. That's in the Bible. The coming of the Lord didn't come with, with pleasantries. When the Lord was here the first time, he got beat to death by the Romans, hung up, pinned to a cross. That's why in the book of Revelation, it tells you when I come, I shall not meet thee as a man. The first time he came meet met you as a man, he had the power to take, take over. He said, know you not that I can pray to my, my father in heaven and he shall send me 12 legions of angels. He took the load. The next time he come in, he ain't taking the load. People didn't show him enough respect when he was here, when he was gone, look what they did. They paid him as a leprous, a leprous, a feminine man. You got the Pope saying people that live that alternative lifestyle can be married. What well, in the scriptures it tell you, it, it, it tells you that uh, 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 <laughs> in the scriptures it tells you that um, man, dog is looking at shit, man. In the scriptures it tells you that a a a, a man isn't to lie with another man. And a woman isn't supposed to lie with another woman. So how in the hell can they be married? The blurring of the lines of, of what's morally right and what's acceptable is, is, is gone too far and the Lord is gonna address it. Just like he did with Sodom and Gomorrah. When people went too far, what did the Lord say? He ran fire on Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's get there, man. And this is in the New Testament. This is uh, 2 Peter 2 and 5. It says, And spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So the Lord always brought a judgment upon the world of ungodly. If you wanted to live an ungodly style, you wanted to live that YOLO life, do whatever you wanted against the will of the Lord, the Lord always had a judgment for people that did things like that. This is no different time. It says, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an insample unto those that after should live un ungodly. So this was an example when the Lord burned up Sodom and Gomorrah for that sexual depravity that was going on in there. Right, you read back in the account of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, uh, the angels came in that town and the people came to Lot's house tried to beat down the door and, and, and sleep with the angels. So we coming in a time now where people are doing even worse and ungodly shit than that. So the Lord is going to destroy this place, man. It 
This is 2 Peter <clears throat> 2 and 6 again. It says, in turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, right? Sodom and Gomorrah was known for what? Sodom, lesbian, lesbianism, transgenderism, all type of sexual depravity, right? Uh, into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an insample unto those that after should live on Galilee. So when the Lord brought that fire from heaven and burnt them up, that was an example to the people that came after. If they want to live this ungodly style, well, this is the same judgment you're going to get. And this is why America's going to be burnt up. One of many reasons, man. One of many reasons, man, the, the, the depravity that these people have. Right? And, and, hey, and for all these people that, these small hatters, right, these small hatters, <clears throat> so-called JOOs, right, the ones that live in the land of Israel, if they're, the, if they're the Lord's chosen people, if they're really those people, how, how in the hell is the God's chosen people own Pornhub? One of those wicked ass sites like that. How are you gonna be God's chosen people? You get back in the land and then you own Pornhub. The scriptures tell you when the, when the children of Israel get back in the land, right? The nations would learn the war no more and all the, all the ju judges of Israel will be righteousness. <clears throat> But you got the people in the land of Israel just doing all type of wickedness, man. Bombing the hell out of them Palestinians. Using the scripture to justify it. But the Lord said, wait ye upon me until I rise up to the prey. All right, you're not gonna be able to take this on yourself. All right, but, but this is why justice can be prepared because wickedness has been lifted up far too long, man. Let me get this. Uh, back up that point. Uh, Psalms 119 and uh, 126, it says, it is time for thee, Yahweh, to work, for they have made void thy law. Right? And this is why the Lord is going to do his thing, because what? These people have made void the law of the Lord, the void the judgments of the Heavenly Father. Right? And America left is right and right is left. What the scriptures say, woe unto them that call bitter sweet and sweet bitter. Well, this is the nation where people are able to sit here and call those things opposites, right? Let me get that, man. This is a... Uh, Isaiah 5 and 20 says, Woe unto them that call evil good. And do not people call evil good here in America? Is this not where people that call things evil to be good and, uh, and kind? Why is it through America the entire world has to accept this whole alphabet agenda? That's an evil matter. Why is it here in America women were allowed to make shit like OnlyFans and now people in other nations have to accept it? even though it goes against their, their, their religion and their belief system. That's wicked, right? It says, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, and that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Hey, all right, man. Hey, for real, stay up. It says, um, woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own ways. And this is what people, people do, man. They're wise in their own eyes. Right, they believe this is the right way. When you bring out the scriptures to the people, <clears throat> when you bring out the scriptures to people, they don't have anything to say, right? They buck up against it. And they say, that's the Old Testament. Well, the Lord put these judgments out and they were always right judgments. The judgment didn't change because the times changed and what the people accepted changed. Well, the people back then thought doing wicked things were right too. So now we're in a time where they're doing the same thing. <clears throat> so the Lord said, <clears throat> read it again. It says, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own ways, 
woe unto them. And that word woe means destruction unto them. That's what the Lord keeps saying, Isaiah 5 and 22. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward. And this is what you constantly see people get, people justify wicked behavior for a reward. They sell out, they compromise. All right now you got reports of Bishop T.D. Jakes going to Diddy's, uh, P Puff Diddy's freak off parties. And now he's getting brought into his position. Why? Right, because these people tuck the bag, they tuck and they compromise the standard in order for them to get riches. That's why you have all these little reports of people in the music industry having to do debaucherous shit, right? In order for them to keep their riches, to get to a certain status and a level. What the scriptures tell you in the revenues of the wicked, right? There is much trouble. Let me, let me get that, man, actually. I want to say exactly right. Psalms or Proverbs 15 and uh, 6 says, In the house of the righteous is much treasure, right? But in the revenues, right, all those goodies people get. Why do you think every time you get a, a celebrity, now, now these celebrities are, are shitting bricks because, right, a bunch of them are about to get exposed when they release these names <clears throat> from the Jeffrey Epstein. A flight itinerary list, right? Because for you to make money, for you to be at the top in this world and make all that money like that, well, when the Lord was on the scene, the scriptures tell you that Satan brought him up into a high mountain and showed him all the riches of the world, right? And said, I'll give these things to you because it is given unto me to give them to whomever I will. So the scriptures told you right there, you want to make it into that upper elite? You want to make it into the billionaire club? The hundreds of million dollar air club? Well, you're going to have to sell out. You're going to have to compromise in this world. Because that same offer was offered to who the world calls Jesus, his true name in the Hebrews, Yahweh Shai, when, when, the, when Satan came to the temple. Now, let me get that, man. That's in the New Testament. Let me get it, man. Bow down. This is um, this is what is Luke? I don't know. Golly, I gotta Google this. This is Matthew 4. In the book of Matthew, the fourth chapter, the eighth verse. Matthew 4 and 8, it says, And again, the devil taketh them up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. So when the Lord was on the scene, right? After he got baptized, he said he went into the wilderness and he was tempted of the devil. That's in Matthew, the fourth chapter, right? And he said the devil took him up into exceeding mountain, right? And showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou will, will fall down and worship me, right? And there's other accounts, right? In the other gospels, right? Where the same thing was said, but he said, for it is given unto me to give it to whomever I will. So if you want to be in a hundred million dollar air club, you want to be in a billionaire club, you got to sell out. That's the, that's the math that the Lord wrote. Because, hey, the scriptures tell you the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. That's Job 9 and 24, right? So you're not going to be able to make it to that amount. 
That's why the revenues of the wicked, there is much trouble. So these celebrities that get to that point, why do you think at a certain point these celebrities will start looking fucking drained out? Got family problems. The, the, you Jake that's sitting here keep talking about generational wealth, that ain't helping you. I mean, look at Michael Jordan's son. Mike, Michael Jordan played a game with Scottie Pippen for so long. You don't think they, they kids went around each other and stuff? But his son's still over there against his father's wishes. Piping now Scottie Pippen's wife. Right? T.I. son. You don't think he... T.I. got generational wealth, man. That, that, that nigga paid his dues back in the, in the entertainment industry. He got a bunch of other uh, rappers, singers, and artists signed to him. So he's getting royalties off of their shit. That's generational wealth. And look, son, can't shut the fuck up. Talking about he stand on business, he ain't hood. Embarrassing the family. That generational wealth ain't gonna help you. Right? The only thing that our people need is Yahweh Bashim Yahshua. You need to get to that first. Everything else will follow. The Lord said what? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. And all these things should be given unto you. Right? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. And Jake wanna seek money first. Then they get to the Lord. Then they want to try to sit here and find out if they can get saved. Because they start feeling bad because really to get at that status in this world, you got to do a bunch of shit. You got to do a bunch of immoral things, man. And they start scratching at your soul after a minute. There was a... There was that song a while back. I think it's from Immortal Technique. Right? Let me see if I find it real quick. Yeah, Mortal Technique is called Dance with the Devil, right? That song by him. All right, then. <clears throat> but in that song, he tells you about the wicked shit he had to do. Well, guess what? When you, the higher up you go, the more of that wicked, evil shit you got to do. The more wicked, evil shit you got to do, man. It makes no sense how all these celebrities that was in Disney all bugged out of their fucking mind. All of them sitting there talking about how they were abused, they wasn't done right. How? Why? Because when you grabbed onto what Esau offers, it's never good. Right? It's never good. Let me get that songs real quick again and we'll keep going. The Proverbs. It's Proverbs. Proverbs, um, ah, oh, where is that? Man? Proverbs 15 and 6, it says, In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. And the revenues of the wicked, in that pursuit for money, that chasing the bag, there's much trouble, man. Because you're going to have to, you're going to find out there's things you got to do to be part of that club. There's rules and stipulations, sacrifices that gotta be made. Why, why are all these mu musicians all into this, the, the, uh, the God of the Lima, right? The worship of the Lima. When you look that up, it's wickedness. This is why all these celebrities say everybody can be a star. It's that satanic, all that satanic worship to sit here and make everybody a God. Because under the, the Lima, that's part of the tenets of their worship. Right, you want to get higher up in this world, you're going to have to sell out. You're going to have to compromise. You're going to have to bow down. You're going to have to succeed to succeed, right? This is um, going to some prophecy, man. Second Ezra 15. Second is is 15 and uh, fifteen and 1. It says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. And that's the most paramount thing that you should be doing. That's the greatest thing you can do in these times. When you look back in the Revelation, 
was that, um, I think it's 19 and 10. Yeah, Revelation 19 and 10. And it says, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. Right, this is in the book of Revelation. Revelation 19 and 10, it says, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of, of Jesus. That's verbatim, the real name of the Lord is Yahweh Shai in the Hebrew. His name was never Jesus. When the Lord was on the scene, the letter J wasn't even in the alphabet. There's no letter J in the Hebrew. And he had a Hebrew name, right? It says, um, I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the Most High, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. That's, that's what you're supposed to do. That's how you know if you have the spirit of the Lord on you. It's whether or not you can go into these prophecies. Right? The Lord said what? You are no longer servants, but friends. For, a master, for, 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 for the master doesn't tell his servants what he do, but his friend tells you all things. So now the Lord set it up in these last days so that prophecy would actually be spoken and broken down so that his people would understand and prepare himself. And that's what you're seeing, man. Brothers are standing on their feet in boldness, in the spirit, preaching the words of the Lord, changing their life, changing their age, changing their entire appearance to conform with what the Lord said, man. Right? In the world, man, I was, I had to go teed up, the crispy lineup, man. Right? I came in this truth. This thing started growing out, did away with the lineups. Right, because those things are against the scriptures. That's against the commandments of the Lord. Right? But this is what you're seeing, man. Brothers that have the spirit of prophecy. Because that's how you know whether or not you got the spirit of the Lord on you. So back to 2nd Genesis 15 and 1, it says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, say Yahweh, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Right? And that's, th these are the true and faithful words. What's written in the scriptures, those things are gonna come to pass. Whether or not you perceive and understand it, they come to pass, right? When the Lord said what? In the book of Revelation, that the, 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 the river Euphrates would be dried up to make way for the kings of the east. Well, when you look over there right now, the Euphrates River is drying up, right? And what are they doing? They're building, you got the Russian military building little bridges, right? All over the, 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 the Euphrates River Basin in order to get military aid and equipment over that entire area. So that's prophecies coming past. So these things actually apply. That's why the scriptures say <clears throat> these words are faithful and true. Where the hell all these Moabites come from, man? It's just crazy. It says, Fear not the imagination against thee, and let not the incredulity, the unbelief of them trouble thee that speak against thee, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness, man. Right? These unbelieving souls, these people that have, have the spirit on them, if you wasn't given the spirit to believe, you were born in vain. The scriptures tell you, let the multitude perish then. Let's get that, man. This is, um, second Ezra 9 and 22. It says, let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain, and let my grape be kept and my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect. So there's a multitude of people, right? When, it, when Yahweh Shai was on the scene, he said, what? Strive ye enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way, and many there be that go in thereat that are gonna be destroyed. So let the multitude, let those that wanna go in the way of the world perish. They wasn't born for anything but to be part of the number that gets destroyed. There's a many people that are just made to be destroyed. These people that don't wanna kick a little crack habit, right? 
these people that women that don't want to stop being whores, men that don't want to be masculine, right? The whole L, L, LGBT community, let let the most two perish. Let them get put out of this earth. Let the Lord do his work when the day come, man. But the Lord said he's gonna he's gonna keep his great with great let great labor had he made it perfect. Right? So brothers that are doing this work, man, you do hey. The Lord put you in this thing. You ain't got to have confidence that, that you're worthy, man, because none of us are worthy, man. I tell this to brother, a, a brother from the camp, man. I tell him straight up, man, I'm not in the mindset of I'm worthy. None of us are worthy. I don't deserve to be here, bro. Right? Brothers don't deserve to be here, man. We did so much wicked shit in the world. We don't deserve to be here. That's why the scriptures say, the scriptures tell you that what? All of us have fallen short of the glory. Every one of us, we, we hey brothers, when you go off, you try to do your best, you go off. None of us are worthy, man, but we know the confidence in this thing should come from what? It's written. The Lord said this was gonna happen. The Lord said if I do this, right? If I endure to the end, I'll be saved. Right? That's where your confidence comes in. All right, this is a great work brothers are doing, man. This ain't a small thing. This ain't a small thing at all. Right? We got the words. The Lord has given us the words that can help people be safe. The elect be saved, man. But back in the second Exodus 15 and 5, it says, Behold, said the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, sword, famine, death, and destruction. So 2024 ain't going to be no nice thing. The Lord said he's going to be bringing plagues upon the world, sword, famine, death, and destruction. Now you got the, the Russian military dealing with a uh, uh, mouse fever mouse fever man and the more and more death that goes out the more and more of those infectious rodents those infectious beasts are going to multiply in the land because they have they're going to have things to eat they're going to have things to eat all right those unclean birds that bring diseases those are going to multiply number two man and a lot of those unclean animals they actually proliferate faster they actually uh, populate faster than clean animals. They have shorter uh, periods of birth and everything like that. So those cycles, man, it's, it's gonna speed up. Disease is gonna ramp up. Disease is gonna ramp up, right? And that's the plague, sword, famine, great destruction. All these things are getting geared up. 2024, Lord will will be the year where all hell hits America, man. You had little glimpses. You had little glimpses, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. We had glimpses, right? 2024, man, is looking like it's going to shape up to be that year. And Lord willing, it be that year. Right? You got Russia. There was a video that I made a, a lesson on yesterday. Russia saying that they have missiles that hit like meteorites. Thermonuclear missiles that hit like meteorites. Well, the Lord used allegorical speech in the scriptures to describe those missiles because the Lord put it in these people's hearts to make those missiles, man. This is uh, Deuteronomy 32. And... 41. I'm sorry, 40. It says, For I lift my hand up to heaven and say, I live forever. And that's what the Lord did, man. The Lord lives forever. The Lord, the Lord has the power. The Lord is the only God that actually exists. Everyone in other countries, the, the gods of these nations, right? You got what? Buddha, Allah, Hare Krishna. Right? Tao. All these gods in the nation, they're just idols. They can't do shit. They don't got power to do nothing. Right? But the God of the Bible, the God of the Holy Bible, right? He's the only power that actually exists. So the Lord said, what? He lifted up his hand to heaven and said, I live forever. It says verse 40, 41. If I wet my glittering sword and my, my hand take hold on judgment, and that's what you're going to see. The Lord is going to wet his glittering sword. And what is that glittering sword? What is that allegory? 
Where is that? What is that poetic speak alluded to? It's alluded to the thermonuclear missiles, man. Those same things that these nations just keep building on and perfecting, right? That is, that's the sword of the Lord. It says, if I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and I will reward them that hate me. The Lord is going to reward those that hate him. And the people of this world hate the Lord, man. This is why they promote everything that the Lord doesn't like. Shit, when Israel was in the wilderness and they provoked the Lord, what did he do? Sent uh, fiery serpents against them. Angels start smiting Jake in the wilderness. Well, we're in the same time now where people are promoting and lifting up everything that is against what the Lord likes. So what, what's gonna happen? Judgment. Judgment. Great death, mourning. The scriptures tell you the day of the Lord is darkness and not light, even great darkness and no light in it. Right? So these people that are just, and that, oh, everything's good spirit. Everything ain't gonna be good. Right? If you ain't in the truth, if you ain't in the truth, everything ain't gonna be good. It's about to get tough. 2024 about to be rough. They, they're talking about a draft. Right? A lot of people ain't got the mindset to go on a draft, man. People gonna be curling up, curling up like little bitches and balls. The scriptures tell you, uh, why do I see every man with his hands on his, on his loins like a woman in travail? You got men, they're gonna be men folding up like bitches in these days, man. It's gonna be tough. Deuteronomy 32 and 39 and 41. It says, if I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies and I will reward them that hate me. I'll make my arrows drunk with blood. What do they call them? A stolen nuclear missile. A broken arrow, man. So the Lord said he's gonna make his arrows drunk with blood. Meaning it's gonna exact a lot of death. It says, my sword shall devour flesh. Right, so do swords actually devour flesh or just poetic speak? That's why the Lord said he's gonna speak unto them in parables and similitudes. But you gotta have the mind, you gotta have spirit on you to actually break these things down. It says, I will make my arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh, right? And that, and that with the blood of the slain and, and of the captives from the beginning of revenge upon mine enemy. And that's what we get prepared to see, the beginning of the revenge of the Lord upon his enemies. <sighs> right? It says, Re rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and render vengeance to his adversaries and will have mercy up unto his land and to his people. It didn't say to all the people of the world. The Lord said he was going to have mercy unto his people. So now you need to figure out who the people of the Lord. And the people of the Lord of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? Which are you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, Latinos, Haitians, Guatemalans, right? All you go have go back to your own respective tribes. And the Lord is gonna come back for the elect of you, man, because there's plenty of Jake. There's plenty of Jake that ain't doing right. Plenty of Jake that ain't doing right. If you ain't doing right, you ain't gonna get right, right? The Lord ain't gonna give you that tender mercy, that, <laughs> that sure mercy to David. You gotta be doing the things that are acceptable, right? But the Lord has a judgment coming. It's Isaiah 13. Isaiah 13 and five and four. It says, a noise of a multitude in the mountains like a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, Yahweh hosts, Muster the host of the battle. See, the Lord wants war. If he's mustering the host, right, it was his pleasure to bring all these armies together. Did he bring them together so they could sit here and make a, a damn acapella group? No, these armies are being brought together. These All these nations are getting geared up, perfecting their military equipment, making new missiles, making new guns. Russia two years ago came out with a brand new uploaded Kalashnikov. Why do you make a new, brand new gun like that when the old one was able to kill professionally? 
Why? Because you're getting ready for a real battle. Right? It says, they come from a far country, from the end of heaven. Even the Lord in the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. And how is a weapon coming from the end of heaven? Because it's being shot throughout the world. Right? Therm intercontinental ballistic missiles. Where does it go? It goes from one continent to an another continent. How does it get there? Goes into the atmosphere, attaches the war, detaches the body, right? Has a more of a, a propulsion system, comes back into the atmosphere, and it has another detachment for the warheads, which have another propulsion system on it. Then it opens and it destroys. That's what the Lord's prepared. Just like every nation had, in every nation under heaven, right? In every rulership, every kingdom that ever rose up, right? Whether it be the French, the Spanish, the Gauls, right? Whether it be any of these nations, they had their own military advancements and they had their time to sit here and make war and destroy the nations. Well, we're coming in a time where the Lord is gonna make war against America through these other nations, right? And every, everybody who is actually serious can understand and see that yes, war is being prepared, right? You got military professionals that live that life telling you that, hey, we looking at the way it's going, we're gonna to have to start having drafts. The way it's going and then meeting their, their numbers. Hopefully the cooler heads will prevail. Well, cooler heads won't prevail. It says, um, they come from a far country, even uh, from a car, far country from the end of heaven, even Yahweh, and the weapons of his indignation. Right? That word indignation goes into righteous anger. So these weapons come from the ends of heaven, right? From the heavenly father, because the Lord, what? He said, the, uh, the, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, and you turn him, him whithersoever he goeth, whithersoever he will. Right? So the Lord is putting it on these nations. Hey, you know what? Get your missiles ready over here, right? Now tell that scientist to try this, and he splits the atom. Work on the propulsion system. I want this thing to go to Mach, Mach 8, 32,000 uh, 32, uh, kilometers an hour, which is uh, 21,000, 21, a little over 21,000 miles per hour. You ain't got shit to do at that. At that point, man, you just, you say your last prayer and you hope the Lord accepts you, right? Because you ain't got time to do nothing. You might as well just stay in your wickedness at that point. If you've been wicked that whole time to where these nations shoot off their missiles, right? And you ain't took the time to repent. You ain't turned to the Lord. You ain't really changed in your ways. You might as well just stick to your wickedness. I mean, he says that in the book of Revelation, last two chapters, right? I believe it's in one of the last two chapters. It says, he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is uh, holy, let him be filthy still, right? So the judgment that's getting prepared, we getting ready to see those things happen in the world, right? This is uh, Isaiah 13 and five. It says, they come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord in the weapons of his indignation, that word indignation means righteous anger, to destroy the whole land. So the Lord has weapons made through these other nations that are built to destroy the whole land. And what weapons do you know of that's in existence now that can actually destroy whole masses of land? Thermonuclear missiles. Thermonuclear missiles, right? How you for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty, right? So the day of the Lord is gonna come as a destruction from the Almighty. It's not gonna be all tender goodness. It's not gonna be hugs and kisses. It's not gonna be gently being taken up into heaven. It's coming with destruction, right? Salvation for some, destruction for many. Right? It says, um, um, verse seven, it says, therefore shall all hands be faint and every man's heart uh, shall melt. Because when you see and you hear that alarm go off, you saw your cell phones, boom, 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 those emergency alerts, right? Those nuclear sirens in the air and all that. When you see those things actually start coming on this earth, bro, it's gonna cause a, a, a fear in you, man. It's gonna cause some trembling in your heart, right? Even Ezra said, hey, hey, can I live to those times, man? That's the type of destruction that's gonna come where you gotta, you, you, you scared to act. You don't wanna live there. Right? Judgments get prepared. It says, uh, verse 8. 
It says they, they shall be afraid. Pains and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall, shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger. The Lord, day of the Lord cometh cruel. It's going to be a very harsh judgment, right? All that love and, and tenderness that, that people, God is love, bullshit that the people preach. Yeah, the Lord's love, but he's also hate. The Lord's tender, but he's also wrathful. The Lord's uh, forgiving, but he's also vengeful, right? And the times where you had the, uh, a chance to, to take part of the Lord's grace, his mercy, his tenderness, you did everything that the Lord hated. So all that's going to remain is their wrath, judgment, destruction. It says, um, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinner thereof out of it. And that's what this is coming for, for the wicked of the people, man. The Lord said what? For their sakes came the flood. For the wicked sakes came the flood. So when the fire comes, for the wicked sakes came the fire. Right? It says, um, for the stars of heaven shall be, uh, for the stars of heaven and the constellation thereof shall not give their light, and the sun shall be darkened and is going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Why? Because that, 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 that nuclear cloud is going to be over the earth, man. It's going to blot out the skies. Right? When you had those fires in California, right, it blotted out the sun. Well, well, imagine a thermonuclear missile burning everything up to the point where everything is just turning into elements, man. That's gonna that's gonna create a massive cloud. That burning is gonna create great darkness, right? This is um Ezekiel twenty one. Verse 9 says, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, saying, Sword, the sword is sharpened, and also furbished. When you go into that word furbished, it means polished and perfected. Right? That word sharpened means so lucky. That word sharpened means polished and perfected. Furbished means what? To make like new. Right? So all those missiles that were sitting in the silos for years, they didn't have to put too much money in. Hey, man, they, they picked those things apart. Right? Retrofitted certain equipment updated certain things and now the, the new missile systems that are coming out man they 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 put to shame anything that was used in the old world right hiroshima and nagasaki is going to be a cakewalk compared to what the lord has prepared for america the scriptures talked about in the book of revelation right the lake of fire america is going to be that lake of fire it's going to be destroyed it says um Verse 10, it is sharpened to make a sword slaughter. Right? These weapons are, are being perfected to what? Bring forth great death. You can't get around it. There's a judgment that the Lord has. And there's plenty of people who have opportunities to change their ways and fix what they're doing, get to the Lord and figure out what's acceptable to him that, that they didn't take that opportunity. So that at a certain point, what the Lord's gonna be judgment against people that don't take the opportunity to change their ways. And we in those days. It says, it is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter. So we then make mirth and contemn the rod of my son as every tree. And, it had, and he had given it to be furbished that it may be handled. This sword is sharpened. This sword is sharpened. And it is furbished. Uh, to give it into the hand of a slayer. To give it into the hand of the slayer. So these weapons were made and perfected. So that in these last days, the Lord can give it to these nations. They're going to be ready to shoot them on Babylon the Great. The scriptures tell you, spare you no arrows. Right? Destroy her wholly. That's what the Lord's going to do. When, it, when it's time for World War III to kick off, when it's time for all hell to start kicking off, man, People are going to be living it in absolute terror. It's not going to be nice out here, man. Right? It's not going to be nice out here. Life ain't going, going to go on as it was. This whole world is going to be changed. How women operate, how men operate, the way food is grown and, and, and 
and land is cultivated, all this shit's gonna be changed. But that comes through first, the destruction of those that are in power, the destruction of what is. <coughs> what is has to be destroyed. What has been allowed, actually. What has been allowed has to be destroyed. Skyscrapers and shit, this shit shouldn't be. The scriptures tell you, you're not supposed to build over, uh, over uh, three or four stories. But here it is, you got buildings with, with, with 64 floors, 110 floors, right? 34 floors, right? It, 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 and it's, what does it do? Blocks out the sunlight from the plant life, blocks out the angle of the sun so you don't get as much light in the cities, right? The Lord had perfect judgments that people don't want. It says, um, Ezekiel 21, in 12 it says cry and howl son of man for it shall be upon my people it shall be upon all the princes of Israel terrors by reason of the sword shall be upon my people smite therefore upon thy thigh right so the Lord has a judgment and a lot of Jake is going to get trapped in that judgment because they do wicked shit man this is um Isaiah 54 Isaiah 54 and 16, it says, I'm sorry, 15, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that blow the coals in the fire. And that smith is your modern day scientist, man. Smiths, that, hey, that was an extremely, for you to be a smith, man, you had to get trained up on that. Right? To know exactly when to hit the metal, and what temperature to heat things up to, how much of what, what metals to bring together to make the perfect alloy. What? That's what these, these, these scientists do. They come up with the, the metals and the things that they use to make these missiles to withstand that heat. They're going up into the atmosphere, or they're withstanding the heat of the propulsion system. Right? That was their jobs. And that's what they do now. So the, the Lord created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, I have created the waster to destroy. So the Lord created the waster to destroy. These missiles, man. The Lord put into the minds of these scientists, right? These nuclear physicists to create these weapons all so that what? Destruction can come. All right, this is the Lord's plan. Right, the destruction, the coming death, the, the coming hell, that thing was ordained, preordained, pre-written in the Lord's plan for what people here today would have to go through. Right? You got you got it even so bad that not even a marriage is sacred no more. Right? Not even a union between a man and a woman, women a leader, man for any reason. Get divorced and then go on YouTube or TikTok and make complaining videos that they man moved on or it's not as easy as it was. They think they're, they're pretty parties for themselves. This is um second answer sixteen. Second Ezra sixteen and sixteen. It says uh, I'll start at 14. It says, Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. Well, that's in the New Testament of what the Lord said. What? The element shall melt with fervent heat. It says, Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returning not backward. Right? When you're talking about a missile going 21,000 miles plus. 21,000 miles per hour plus, right? That's some shot of a mighty archer, man. You gotta have the forearm strength to keep that thing stable. Make it curve if you want, because archers were able to actually curve their arrows around walls and shit. It says, um, of a mighty archer return out backward, even so the plagues that are, sh uh, the plagues <clears throat> that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again. <clears throat> so when famine kicks off 
and people start dying again from mass numbers of all various diseases, hey, th those things aren't gonna stop, right? And civil unrest really kicks in and you can't go nowhere. You're under threat of people breaking in your house when you leave, selling your shit. Those things ain't gonna stop, it's gonna keep going. Right? And when World War III kicks off <clears throat> and missiles are being shot, nations are getting invaded, those things ain't gonna stop, it's gonna keep going, man. Right? Says, um, woe is me, woe is me, who will, re who will deliver me in those days? Because Ezra saw these things and he was, he was like, man, I'm gonna be there, right? In the book of Job, it tells you, Job said what? When, herbs de when worms devour this body and I shall live again, right? Ezra knew that he was gonna come back in a re reincarnation. That's why when you go into the New Testament, the Lord asked him about John the uh, Baptist, right? And he said, hey, they say that Elijah should come, right? But he has it. He said, hey, Elijah surely come, and this is John the Baptist, if thou canst, canst receive it. So reincarnation is biblical. <clears throat> so Ezra's is seeing these things in his vision. He's like, man, am I, am I going to be there? You know he didn't see any missiles like that in his time. <clears throat> Military equipment that was being shown for the last war to happen. So he knew it wasn't in his time that those things were made, but he could understand that, hey, the days that are coming, he was gonna be possibly back in the flesh in those days. So 2 Ezra 16 and 18, it says, the beginning of sorrows and great mourning, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the power should stand in fear, the beginning of evil, <clears throat> what shall I do when these evils shall come. And that's what the Lord, that's what 2024 is gonna be. The beginning of the sorrows and great death, the beginning of the evils and great, uh, great war. 2024 ain't gonna be nice, man. And it's not gonna get better. It's gonna be more expensive to live. It's gonna be more homelessness. It's gonna be more sorrows, more hardship, right? More uncertainty. More and more wicked acts of the people. 2024, hey, the Lord could possibly make that the year, man. Lord willing, 2024 could be the year where all hell pops off in America and around the world, man. All this fake civility, man, it shit needs to stop. It says, behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are scourges for a minute, right? These things, hey, when, when COVID came around, that was sent for you to sit here, actually sit here and, and take some stock of yourself. Is what I'm doing okay? Am I, am I going off? There's plenty of people that didn't take that, that, that time to sit here and, and adjust their ways. It says, um, it says verse 20, it says, but for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. So even though all this shit happened, these people ain't gonna correct their ways. They're not, not gonna shape up. Right? They're gonna stand to that wickedness, man. They ain't gonna change. And that's why when the de destruction comes, it's gonna be 100% justified. Now I'm gonna jump to uh, Job 20. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah, Job 20. Job 20 and 5 says, <clears throat> 4. Job 20 and 25, so I started uh, 22. It says, In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. When he is about to fill his belly, the Most High shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he's eating. So just when Esau's plans is kicking off, the Lord is going to throw that monkey wrench in, the, in, in, in his gears, man. Right? It says, um, he shall flee for the iron weapon. What is that iron weapon? It's talking about those missiles. 
It's another allegorical speech, poetic speech, man. He shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel shall strike him through. And it's drawn out of the, out. And how is he gonna flee, man? He's gonna flee into them bunkers, man. He's gonna flee into them bunkers. You know, on his private jets, trying to stay here, go into his international space stations, try to go into his underwater uh, bases, go into his doomsday bunkers, right? He gonna flee from the iron weapon. When he sees war popping up, they gonna go right into wherever they got planned, right? He shall, it says, um, verse 25, it says, it is drawn and coming out of the body, yeah, the glittering sword, coming out of his gall, terrors are upon him. So when these missiles start being shot at those silos, shot from those submarines, right? Shot from every aspect that Esau's prepared, that thermonuclear missile can be shot through, right? That's gonna be when terrors are upon him. Right? Those missiles, thermonuclear missiles, don't, those weren't created to collect dust. Those were created to be used. And we come into the time of war that, yes, they will be used. 100% they're going to be used. Hey, there's no doubt in my mind about that, man. It says, um, it is drawn out of the body. Yeah, the glittering sword coming out of his dogs. Terrors are upon him. All darkness is hidden in his secret places. A fire not blown shall consume him. And when you go into that fire not blown, you go into how thermonuclear missiles actually work. It's actually two bomb. It's a bomb within a bomb. One bomb is to get it up to heat. The second bomb is to basically create that potion, that, 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 that actual explosion to actually get it to start to push out. So, I, so one bomb gets it up. I think it's, I think it's like a, a, a million degrees or 100,000 degrees. And the other bomb is actually for, for it to actually ex expand the explosion so that it can actually start breaking down the atoms in the air, right? So when those atoms in the air get heated up, they move and boom, that separation of those atoms comes that energy, right? So these missiles don't need somebody to fan them, right? It says, um, a fire not blown shall consume them it shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. Because if you're in the soils of America, or wherever the Lord had those missiles created to hit, and that day, you threw. It says, all darkness shall be hid in the secret places. Job 20 and 26, a fire not blown shall consume. It shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity. And that's what's happening, man. The Edomites iniquity, the so-called white man's evils that he's done in the entire world, right? The heaven shall reveal his iniquities. Those things are getting displayed to everybody. Everybody's seeing the way Esau's deal. Right? I was watching the brother from the LA camp. Uh, I think it's uh, GMS Motivation Inspiration. I think that's what it's called. Right? But he was doing a lesson, and you had him talking about this Edomite that was in Vietnam and all the atrocities that they committed and how they, they were actually incentivized to sit here and just kill innocent people because they wanted to get the death toll up. Well, these things, all the, all the wickedness that Esau's done, the so-called white man and his people have done throughout the world, all that shit is coming up. Every, every time you turn around, there's a new documentary on some evil shit that's happened. Even this shit with Palestine, those are just fucking Edomites, right? Them small hatters, the so, them JOOs, those are Edomites over there just indiscriminately bombing hospitals and shit. Well, all these things, all, all that iniquity is being brought, brought up. Everybody's seeing the wickedness that this devil's done. So now, it's coming to the Lord. The Lord's seeing these things and he's about to start issuing out his judgments. And call the law, Yahweh Bashimi al for the judgment of the Lord that is about to be revealed in the earth. It says, um, the heavens shall reveal his iniquity and the earth shall rise up against him the increase of his house shall depart away and all in his goods shall flow away in the day of his wrath, right? All this wealth that Esau's accumulated, the building up in this nation, the, the infrastructures that he's had around the entire world, all this shit's gonna be taken from him, right? When, the when his destruction comes, right? The Lord got this planned out. It's, it's planned out, man. It's, it's, it's a master plan and we just waiting for it to go forth. Let me, um, 
see what else I got. Yeah, this is uh, Isaiah 34. I'm in on this, man. Isaiah 34 and 1. Isaiah 34 and 1, it says, Come near ye nations uh, to hear, hearken ye people, let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it, for the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury is upon all their armies. He, he had utterly destroyed them. He had delivered them into, uh, delivered them to the slaughter. So when World War III comes, right, and a war in heaven, Esau fighting against the Heavenly Father, these other nations bucking up, right? The Lord's, hey, the Lord's gonna slaughter them. It says, their slain also shall be cast out and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses and the mountain shall be melted with their blood and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down as a leaf falleth from off the vine, and as a fig tree from off the fig, and a fig from off the a fig tree. So that's what's going to happen. This kingdom is going to be thrown down, right? America is going to be destroyed, and only the elect, only the elect of the nation of Israel, the so-called Negroes, the Spanish and Native Americans, right? The confusion of faces. Those fathers go back to them, right? But look like the other nations, only the elect of them are going to be delivered out of this place. Right? So Lord willing to edify them and say, Call Halal, Yahweh, Shimmy Al Shai, Shimma Karkadash, Shalom.